Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Today we will discuss about Project Lombok. Agenda of today's discussion will be what is Lombok, how to install Lombok and where to find authentic Lombok documentation. So we will primarily focus on these three criteria or these three topics. So first let's try to understand what is Lombok. So it is an API for Java developers to make their life easy. They need to write a lot of boilerplate code especially for Pojo classes and also it makes Pozo classes looks like very bulky. That's why project Lombok came into the picture. What is boilerplate code? So it is some sort of repeated code with little tweak into it. Guys, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you will get early notification. Also like, comment and share the videos. Okay guys, so now let's start our discussion. So as I explained, Project Lombok is an API which has prime aim of reducing boilerplate code. It is not like you are going to add any feature into your project. It is just like you will get some relief where you need not to write a lot of getter or setter method or two string method into your pro into your Pojo class. Also, it makes your Pojo class looks very clean and that's that's what the job of Project Lombok. Project Lombok is a Java library that automatically plugs into your editor and build tools spicing up your Java. Never write another getters or equals method again. With one annotation, your class has a fully featured builder, automate your logging variables and much more. So now the second category, we already got to know what is Lombok. Basically, it focuses on boilerplate code. You need not to rewrite same set of code again and again. That's what it focuses on. Now, the second category where we need to focus on is how to install Lombok. So make sure to use Lombok dependency into your project. So you just need to use Lombok dependency into your project. If let's say you are developing a core Java project, then what you can do is you just go to projectlombok.org and from there you have to download the latest release of project Lombok and you just have to provide the path of that jar into your build path. If you are using Code Java, if you are using Maven project, then you have to define Maven dependency. Okay, so that is the first step. Second step is you have to install that jar into your Eclipse so that Eclipse can identify the setter or getter method which has been developed by Lombok. So how you are going to install Lombok into your Eclipse that I'm going to demonstrate right now. What I'll do is first I'll, I'll create one Spring Boot project. Okay, let me create that. I'll go to start.spring.io and this is a Spring Initializer. Here I have to select Maven project Java and the stable release, latest stable release. I'll go for group name something like uh, com. OSA artifact will be uh, Lombok and name will be Lombok demo project for a Spring Boot Lombok and com.lsr.lombok that looks good jar packaging will be jar and the Java version will be 8 now I will go for dependencies so first thing what we need is Lombok okay then we will go with web Spring web then we will go for h2 database actually i i don't need all this because i'm not going to showcase you by using h2 database and all but i'm just including because later on i'll use the same project for some other purpose and i'll use data jpa spring and then i'll use developer tool as well so lombok spring be uh, spring web 
H2 database, Spring Data JPA, Spring Boot Dev Tools. What else I need? I don't think anything else I need, so I'll go for generate. It is going to give me a GIF file. So I'll go for. So I will just copy this GIF file and I'll go for my project workspace. So this is where I'll just paste it here lombok.jip and then I, what I'll do is I'll extract to lombok. I'll get into this lombok under lombok and this pom.xml where your pom.xml exists that's what you have to use when you are importing the project into your workspace. So what I'll do is I'll just open my Eclipse and then this is my uh, workspace in Eclipse. Now what you have to do is you have to just give a right click import and here we will select existing Maven project or what you can do is you just write existing Maven existing Maven project go for next and then browse so this is the place where pom.xml present for Lombok and we are good so just finish it will take one or two minute to load your project into the workspace so here we are and you can see we have our project ready now if you will go to the maven dependencies you will find lombok dependency over here so this is lombok lombok dot lombok hyphen 1.18 so this is the latest release of lombok i believe so what i'll do is i'll just give a right click to this go for properties and here you can see it is giving me path where it is present so I'll just go to this path and copy this Lombok jar so that I'll install this Lombok jar into my Eclipse. This is the place where Lombok.jar is there and that's what is getting used in our project. So what I'll do is I'll just copy it and I'll just paste it somewhere. Let's say on desktop and I'll, I'll just paste it over here. Now what I'll do is I just have to install this Lombok into my Eclipse. So before that, what I'll do is I'll just close my Eclipse and I'll show you where my Eclipse is there. So D drive and then I have to go for Eclipse and here this is the place where my Eclipse is there. So where you can find Eclipse.exe. So this is the home location okay, of my Eclipse. What I'll do is I'll just open my command window so windows are cmd and then java hyphen jar so java by default you can use but sometimes what happens is when you are going to use java command it will see, uh, it will give you error something like uh, unable to find java command or something in that case what you can do is first thing is you have to see whether your java bin directory is there in your path environment variable or not so that you can check how you can check is simply by using echo percentage path percentage so these are the path environment variable right now set for your system one now there are two way to set your java bin path one is by a system environment variable and another is for this command window only so what i'll do is i'll just set a java bin path by java bin path in this command window only so the validity of that path will be until this command window exists once this close that path will be lost so that's what uh, so i'll just need for my uh, lombok installation so uh, what i'll do is i'll just go for set path is equal to dollar path so whatever path is there along with that at the end just include what i'll do is i'll just include uh, my jdk bin path so where is my jdk i'll go to this uh, then there is installation directory inside installation directory i have jdk and this is the path which i am going to use so alt space ep okay so done now i can use anything java c i am able to use java p 
I am able to use. So this is how you can set path of your Java bin from command window. So now what I'll do is Java hyphen jar and then I have to give Lombok jar path. So this is the Lombok jar. I can directly give this path. Okay. Or I can just copy this, uh, this Lombok jar at somewhere and then I can use it. So I'll use direct. Let's use it directly. So and then Lombok. So this is what we have to use. Okay. Now enter. So it will try to get your Eclipse uh, path by scanning but sometimes it doesn't work so what you can do is you just specify the location so i have shown you my eclipse location so my eclipse location okay sorry let me go once again this is my eclipse location here my eclipse.exe present so this is my eclipse location that's what i am going to give here so a specify location and then i'll just give this okay so eclipse.exe it expects so finally install and by the end you will find this install successful now quit installer and this confirms lombok installation is done into your project space as soon as you will do this you can find this lombok.jar into your eclipse path so this is done now now you are all set to run or execute now you are all set to use Lombok into your project. Okay. So now I'll show you some of the uses of uh, Lombok. However, I the main agenda is I have to walk you through the authentic documentation from where you can find the authentic documentation of Lombok. And this is none other than the Lombok project Lombok.org, which is the actual authentic site for Lombok okay okay so whatever process of installation i have shown you that you can use even in mac also so right now i have shown you on windows but same process is going to work on mac as well also now as we discussed already installation of lombok along with uh, uh, how to use Lombok into your project by using Lombok dependency. So what we will do is now we will try to understand some of the well-known annotation of Lombok. Also guys, one of the very very important note that you have to make sure in project Lombok, when first time you are working with project Lombok, sometimes it is not going to take automatically. So after installation, just the project on which you are using Lombok just make a Maven update okay so that it will start taking your Lombok project okay so let's go to our system so this is our project Lombok application okay and uh, everything is done now what we will do is we will try to create a class and we'll try to understand Lombok. So first thing is, let me walk you through some of the well-known annotation of Lombok. And we are going to discuss all of these annotation one after another. Okay, so getter and setter. Getter and setter, these are the well-known annotation which is getting used in Lombok. Actually, it will give you getter and setter of your field so you need not to write getter and setter and make your co code look so bulky by defining proper getter and setter rather what you need to do is you just have to define these annotation and lombok is going to generate getter and setter for you so you can use it on any non-static variable also simply can be used on class itself so that all non-static variables setter and getter will be generated by default by default all of these implementation will be done with public however you have option to define access level using access level parameter 
access level none will allow you to disable getter or setter from any field so this is what getter and setter will do okay also this is what i have done is i have just taken essence of all this annotation of lombok however if you want to understand more about annotation there are i am going to discuss hardly five or six annotation which are widely used however if you want to understand more about lombok annotation then what you can do is you can go to lombok project lombok site and there you have a whole lot of thing to understand so i'll show you how to go to those annotation detail where they have explained all their annotation how to use where to use and what are the criteria they are covering everything they have explained uh, they have explained in a great manner so let me walk you through how to access those explanation so just go to this and go for project lombok so this is project lombok.org that's where you have to go and now what you have to do is you have to go for features and from there you have to go for a stable now you can see you have all the annotation over here okay so we are going to discuss getter setter to a string equals and has set and uh, this is about the constructor there are three for constructor no arg required arg and all arg constructor data and value there are other as well like you can make use of at annotation log which is uh, which makes your life so easy in case you want to use logger into your application there are so many things that you can go with however i'll just focus on the main one the annotation which is widely used okay so let's go to so this is our so this is our application what i'll do is first i'll explain you getter and setter let's say i have a class called a student okay and there are field for a student like private string name and private int age so these are the two parameter now this is a pojo class so we need to have getter and setter so what basically we need to do is alt s and then we will go for generate getter and setter select all done so you know like uh, this these lines whenever you are going to create any pojo class these things you have to create correct and this makes right now we have only two parameter or two field in the class which is okay right now our class looks good but let's say if we have so many parameter into class then this class will look so bulky only the thing is this getter and setter with uh, getter and setter will have same structure throughout your pozo class however the uh, somehow it is making your class so bulky so that's what that's where Lomb lombok came into the picture and it will make the thing very clean so what you have to do is you just have to go for getter setter you are done so basically if you will go to outline now and you can see you already have all these methods now get name by using some sort of annotation and you see how easy or how clean your class looks like now what you can do is you have getter and setter implementation in your class so after that since you are developing this project first time so what you can do is go to maven and then go for update project make sure the project on which you are working is selected and then go for update it will take some second and finally you are done now let's say in lombok application now i am in this class what i'll do is i'll just try to create an object of a student so a student okay so this is the student object you can see now you have access to get age get name you have access to set name and set age also 
so you know like this getter and setter you have access and you have defined by using lombok which makes your code pretty clean extremely clean okay now let's say if there are 20 parameter let's say and for some of the parameter you don't want to go for a getter and setter so what you can do is you just have to define getter let's say you don't want getter for this name parameter so what you can go do here is value access level dot none okay so as soon as you will do this go to outline and you can see there is no getter method for name there should not be getter method for name save it and then see set name is there but get name is not there or let's say even for setter also you don't want to go for setter method of name then what you can do is access value is equal to access level dot none save it and then again go to outline and now you can see you have only age related getter and setter you don't have getter and setter for name that beautiful now by default getter and setter is going to implement your getter and setter this annotation going to implement implement getter and setter with public access modifier if you want to define if you want to define access level other than public then you have to explicitly mention it something like value is equal to access level dot you can go with all these things like private protected public whatever access modify you need accordingly it will implement getter and setter so it is very easy so this is what about getter and setter and it is extremely easy to implement okay now let's save all okay so getter and setter is good now what we will do is we will try to understand different annotation of constructor so here you can see you have no r constructor all r constructor and required r constructor no r constructor is very simple as name suggests cannot be used with final non static variable if it is not in li inline initialized so if let's say you have non static final variable and you are using no arc constructor and those final variable is not initialized then you cannot use correct because non static field needs to be initialized in line itself or can be initialized through the constructor but if you are going to go with no arc constructor then in that case if final non static variable is not already initialized then it will give you error similarly for all our constructor it is simply whatever fields are present into your class it is going to implement constructor for all those parameter for all those field the order will be based upon the order how you defined those parameter or those field into your the into your class required our constructor is something for only required variable non static variable only so if let's say you have defined some field which is final and is not initialized in line itself then required our constructor a uh, constructor what it will do is it will use that into the constructor argument if you have defined any parameter as none null then in that case also it is going to implement constructor for that parameter so let's have a look on that okay so now what i'll do is i'll just go for no arc constructor which is good so basically whenever if you will go to outline then you can see 
you have a constructor with no arg good now let's create this final string name and now if you will see then this has to be initialized somewhere that's what it is saying correct now it is giving error because this will not be initialized you have only one constructor you have only one constructor that is not parameterized and it will not be initialized so it is giving you error so what you will do is here we have to use required arc constructor and as soon as we will use this what it will do is it is going to initialize only this because this is really required to initialize correct so you can see here this is the constructor okay so but what you want is now let's say if you want you have to have a constructor where both the parameter needs to be initialized so then you can go with all our constructor okay if you will see here then you have now a string and int also you can use uh, multiple so now in this case what happens is it is giving you error because if someone will try to create object with no arg constructor meaning is without argument constructor then this guy will not be initialized this is going to work if it is not final correct so you have to basically lombok is very intelligent and you have to think in this manner only and then you have to implement your annotation so i believe now you are clear about all of these three types of argumented of constructor annotation okay now what we will do is we will go for our third third annotation getter and setter we are able to understand no arg all arg and required arg constructor we are able to understand now we will go with two string two string is very easy you just have to define two string and what it will do is lombok is control shift o whatever unwanted import is there that will be deleted once you will go for control shift o now what lombok is going to do here is it is going to implement two string into your class and what it will print is it is going to print class name along with parameter thing so what i will do is i'll just go with all our constructor and then what i'll do here is i'll just go for name is alosa and age is let's say 22 and then what i'll do is in sop i'm going to print student done so if i'll run it okay so here you can see this is the class name and then this is the parameter name and this is the another parameter name and we got the value two string has been implemented but let's say in two string i don't want name i just want age how you can do that you can do that by using by using here at the rate two string you can go with dot exclude so that will be excluded so now if you will see here it restarted and now i can see only age great it got auto restarted because i am using dev tool in my project now two string is done equals and has code is very easy implement equals and has code method into your class i'm not going to discuss about equals and has code because if i'll try to explain all this it needs another video because i have to explain a lot so it just what you can do is you just go for documentation of project lombok and try to understand what is equals and has code but before that you have to understand what exactly this equals method and has code method of the object class okay 
and how it makes difference and where you can use all those documentation you need to understand if you want me to make video on equals and has per please do let me know in comment however for any of these annotation if you need if you need better understanding then i would re i would recommend you to go to project lombok site as i shown you there are documentation available for all of your not uh, all of your annotation now the next important is data and what is this is it is combination of getter setter to a string required a constructor and equals and has code so whatever we gone through till now all those accumulate all those combined and used under data so what i'll do is i'll just remove all of these and i'll go for data okay and also if you will see all of these annotation let me stop it first all of these annotation come from lombok dot okay so that's also you have to make sure to a string we don't need here right now okay so this is data correct if you will go over here in outline you can see you have get name set as set name set as equals is there can equal has code to a string and then you have a default constructor basically if you will make any of these final let's say required our constructor will be generated automatically sorry go to outline and see this is required our constructor got generated correct also if you want right now if you will try to check to a string method to a string method the, actually in by using to a string method it is going to give you both name and age but if you want to get only age not name then you can make use of exclude similarly if you want to have getter and setter only for age but not for name all those type of combination you can do but by default what add data is going to do is it is going to give all the other annotation like setter getter required our constructor equals has code all these will be there okay now what is at value this at value so basically this will make a student object as immutable so it is just a form of data only only the thing is every parameter of this class will be final along with class itself so that's the only difference rest all is same okay now i have explained all of these like i have explained most well known annotation now the thing is when you are going to use this this is the well known and getting used most of the time at data annotation so whenever you are going to use data annotation only you have to make sure whenever you need no arc constructor just go for that because in this annotation no arc is not there by default required arg is there then all arg whenever you need just go for that okay why i am saying this because whenever you will create entity class for your database thing then you need no arg constructor because hibernate or jpa needs that okay so you have to go you have to understand all this permutation and combination and then you have to use your lombok into your project also guys as also guys as i explained you have to go to projectlombok.org and then go for feature go for a stable and here you will find all the annotation list
features is table and here you have all the annotation list okay to understand better you just have to go try to read about all this whatever experimental is there no need to try all those because those and those are under experiment right now so no need to go for that whatever already a stable annotation present in lombok try to use that and it will make your project extremely clean if someone will go through your project you just think of how clean it is if we are going to implement all this to a string method has code equals getter setter noa constructor all a constructor just think of how bulky your simple class will look like so that's where lombok is the life saver of developers okay so i would recommend please go to all these documentation try to learn more about all this documentation it will give you a lot of confidence so i just focused on main uh, the main annotation which will be used around your project however if you want just go for other annotation because this log annotation is extremely important and it is very easy to use similarly you have var you have not uh, none null clean up so just go through it and try to understand and whatever needed use into your project so i believe this will give you confidence about lombok like how to use lombok into your project or uh, let me know if i need to cover something else in the same topic also guys once again thanks a lot for connecting me and sharing your time with me i believe this video is going to help you a lot also if you have any recommendation please do let me know in comment below okay thank you guys thanks once again stay safe stay healthy bye